What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Um, Before I get into this video, y'all already know what you need to do. Smash that like button. I'm, I'm going for a goal this, this weekend. I'm going for a goal. I need 230 likes this weekend, at least by the end of the weekend. We, I'm going for new goals. It's, it's, it's just, you know, the fall coming up, new season, new goals. You know what I'm saying? We got to do it. And I know you can. Um, so anyway, getting into this episode, I like this episode, by the way. I did. Um, I really want to talk about Sonny and Carly and Mike first, because this episode was beautifully done. It was tasteful. It, it it was it was like the dopest scene because you know what a lot of families go through what the Corinthoses are currently going through with Mike a lot of families go through this and I'm glad GH is touching on this you know um I do want to clear something up because I feel like some people misconstrued misconstrued what I was saying yesterday here's the thing when I said we get too much Corinthos. I'm just saying, you know, like you get Sonny and Carly five days a week. It might be a little too overload or whatever, but it's not just them, though. I would personally say it if it was other people, too. Like if I seen Valentine five days a week, I'll say it's too much Valentine. You know, it's nothing personal. It's just we we got other storylines, you know what I'm saying, that we have to get through. And they're being back burner for other characters and their storylines. And I, for me, I feel like it's not fair. You know, it's nothing against the actors. Of course, I love all the actors on the show, the characters, you know, even ones I don't like. It's nothing against them. It's just we got to get these other storylines out the way, because then, you know, if you don't show them too often, people start to forget what happened and people get bored with it. You know, that's how people get bored with it, because you're not showing it. And, that's, you know, not bored with it, but, you know, people don't care about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what happened with the Brad, you know, Brad and Lucas adoption at the time. It was happening off screen, so we didn't really care. You know what I mean? Like, you got to show these things. So you have to learn how to rotate the characters and the storylines. That's all I'm saying. Um, so anyway, getting into this, um, I love that scene. Carly was spot on with what she said. They have to start making decisions about Mike's care. They have to. You know what I mean? Because they can't keep going the way that they're currently going. Somebody's going to get killed. Like everything Mike has done so far has gotten somebody hurt. And luckily it hasn't escalated to a point where it's something that can't be fixed. You know what I mean? So I agree with Carly. I do feel bad for Sonny because it's hard for Sonny. He knows deep down Carly telling the truth. He know it. He just can't bring himself to admit it. Because he doesn't want to lose his father all over again. You got to remember, Sonny went a long time without his father being in his life. You know what I'm saying? So now that he finally fully has his father back in his life, he doesn't want to let that go. I don't blame him, though. But for me, I feel like you're not letting him go. I mean, you can put him in a nice facility that's close to Port Charles. That way, you and Carly, the grandkids, they can visit him whenever they want. You know what I mean? Like, but something has to be done because you could take all the, you know, measures that you want. It's not working. They, and Carly even said it, too. They've arranged everything. They've altered their entire life, you know, to accommodate Mike. And that still isn't working. You know what I'm saying? You got 24 hour nurse care. You got, you know, better security alarms. You got all these things and bad things are still happening. It just goes to show it doesn't matter what precautions you take. You is nothing you can do about this. This is a disease that you can't fix. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you can try and and you know make everybody's life easier, but it's not. It's not going to happen. No matter how many bodyguards you got, nurses you got, alarms, signs on the doors. It, I mean, I commend Sonny for making all these alterations to the house and the, the security and I commend him for it because he's trying to do whatever he can, not only to make Mike more comfortable, but to make the family comfortable at the same time. I commend Sonny for it. The problem is it ain't working. So you got to find another alternative. And I like that Mike was very lucid today. and He told Sonny, let me start making these decisions now while I have the chance. This is what Stella was trying to tell him months ago. Like you have to get on the ball with this now. 
now is the time to really start looking into this. And I love that conversation that they had. Um, you know, Mike still wanted to look at the residential facilities and stuff, but I do like the compromise that Sonny came up with, though. He did tell Mike, why don't we look at a couple of day, you know, facilities that Mike can stay at, at you know, during the day and stuff like that. But he can come home at night. You know what I'm saying? So that that might work. You know, that may work. I like the compromise there. But Mike was like, you know, I still want to look at the residential stuff, you know, just in case. I like how they came to that conclusion, that compromise. Um, that was a beautiful scene. It was well written. It was well, very well acted. Max Gale, man, let me tell you something. I agree with everybody in the comments. That man better get an Oscar. He better, not an Oscar, but he better get an Emmy. Hell, he deserves an Oscar too. He better get it. You know, he better be nominated for the daytime Emmys next year. He better be because he knocked this shit out the park. He knocking this storyline out the park and I'm loving it. Um, it's so realistic. It's, it's something that, you know, resonates with a lot of the fans because a lot of people are going through this. And, and, you know, it's just very well done. Um, Jordan, new Jordan, her and the DA, they were working pretty good together today. I was like, oh shit. So we get a new Jordan and she's competent. I said, okay. Jordan was on her A game today, making phone calls, getting files, checking shit off, knowing her history of who knew who back in the day, reading people files. I said, okay, Jordan, I see you. Hopefully you keep that shit up. <laughs> Because the PCPD track record ain't good. I'm like, damn, she was impressing me today. Even though it was some basic shit that a kindergarten cop could do. But, I mean, she was impressive. You know, compared to, you know, how she used to run the PCPD. <laughs> she was impressive. I, I give her her props. She was on her on her game today. Um, the DA is like a dog with a bone. Every time she hear the name Corinto, she ready to pounce. Soon as she's seen, because they ran Frank Smith's name, you know, trying to see all his associates, who, people who he, who he associated with back in the day. And, of course, the name on the list was Sonny Corinthos. I said, look at her, salivating. As soon as she saw Sonny's name, she like, mm-hmm, I got you. Bitch, no, you ain't got nothing. Because, first of all, that body, that man was dead and buried for over 30 years. That was long before Sonny even came to Port Charles. Even though Sonny had, you know, buried the body, but she don't know that. But that was 10 years before Sonny even came to Port Charles. So she said it was a decade before Sonny came to town. So that would have been 1983. Wasn't Dante, I believe they said Dante was born around 1984. So Dante would be 34 right now. I don't like to play the age game on, on, on no TV show. I really don't because the ages don't ever make sense. So I don't like to play that game. Um, Because I'm like, the ages don't add up a lot of times. And I'm like, you know, I don't like to play that game. It's not a fun one to play because <laughs> it's like it, it just wraps your brain trying to think, okay, this one 34, the mom of 46, that don't work. <laughs> Because 10 years ago, he would have been 24. She would have been 36. I'm like, yeah, that don't work. Um, ain't no way. No. But um, anyway, so she trying to figure out, you know, who knew Charlie Delaney back in the day. Because now that's the only lead that they got to work with. So, of course, they want to go over to Sonny's house to go talk to Mike. I say, oh, Lord. In my opinion, D.A. Dawson and Jordan could talk to Mike all they want. Even if he slip up and say the wrong thing, I'm pretty sure Diane can get it thrown out. Ain't no way Diane can't get that thrown out. She has to. Because, number one, they know good and well that man got Alzheimer's. He doesn't know what is reality and what's not. I remember just a, like a few weeks ago where he had that conversation with Sonny about a baseball game. He claimed... All these things that, oh, he told Sonny that he was going to take him to a game and yada, yada, yada. And Sonny admitted to Felix. He was like, me and Mike never had that conversation. So ain't no telling what Mike remembers or what he thinks he remembers. So even if he says something incriminating against Sonny, Diane can get that tossed out. She can easily get that tossed out. It ain't going to hold up in court. The man got Alzheimer's. He doesn't know what's reality and what's not. He don't know. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Peter and Maxie getting stuck in the elevator. How convenient. <laughs> like we all know the writers set that up just so they could sit down and talk and the fans could see the chemistry and, you know, get on their side and root for Peter. I, I know the game. Honestly, 
I'm on the fence about Peter and Maxi becoming a couple. I am. I'm on the fence about it. Um, do they have chemistry? To me, I feel like they do have some chemistry. I wouldn't say it's off the charts, but they do have chemistry. And I actually enjoyed their scene today. You know, I was kind of shocked, though. Like, he started hyperventilating and shit as soon as the thing locked up. As soon as the elevator got jammed or whatever, he started hyperventilating and shit. I guess he claustrophobic. I'm the same way. I can be in a closed space. Like, I can be in a tight space, but I have to know mentally I can get out. If I feel like I can't get out, I'm 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 going to start, you know, hyperventilating. Like, you know, trying to get a plastic bag or something and breathe through it. Or, like, I'm just, you know... It just is what it is. That's how claustrophobic people do. I can't be in tight spaces knowing I can't get out. I can be in tight spaces only if I know I can get out. Like, say if I'm in a very small closet. If I'm in a very small closet and the door is closed, I wouldn't really hyperventilate because I know I could just open the door and walk the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? But if that door is locked and it's jammed or something and I can't get out for the life of me, I'm kicking it, I'm clawing at it, whatever, and I can't get out. I'm going to start wheezing and hyperventilating like a motherfucker. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, that's just how I am. Like, I'm I'm that way. Like, I can't. Because I had a traumatic experience like that when I was a kid. So, it's like, I can't be in tight spaces. So, I definitely feel his pain on that one. Knowing that you're in, you know, close proximity and you just can't get out. Like, that's that don't work for me. Um, But he was sitting there sweating, taking off his shirt. I'm like, Peter, chill out. He talking about how long we've been in here. Two seconds. <laughs> Like, as soon as he said that, like, how long has it been? Two seconds. You ain't been in here but two seconds. Chill ass. You gonna get out of there. And, of course, Maxie had to call Olivia. I said, of course. Olivia the only one that works in that hotel. Well, as far as owners go. You you see the shade I'm throwing and who I'm throwing it at. Because <laughs> we don't know Olivia stay at that damn hotel. Every time it's something to do, they always call Olivia. I said, of course. She might as well have full ownership. I will give Carly a pass today because she got some shit to deal with with Mike and the DA. And so I give her a pass today, today. <laughs> but you need to get on it, Carly. You you trying to sit there and call yourself a 50 percent owner. Well, then your 50 percent need to do some goddamn work. <laughs> like for real, how you a 50 percent owner? and You ain't doing shit. You got to get on your job or else you ain't going to get half of that money. I'm just saying if I was Olivia, shit, I'd be taking 100 percent of that profit. Fuck that shit. I'm doing 100 percent of the work. Picture me handing somebody my business partner 50% and yet I'm doing 100% of the work. Yeah, right. You must be out your rabbit ass mind. I ain't giving you no 50%. I ain't giving you two nickels. <laughs> Shit. You better do some work. I'm just saying, like, fuck you think this is? Um, This ain't homeboy hotel. We don't, we don't do business like that around here. I'm just saying. But um, when they finally got out that... um elevator nina was not here for that shit she didn't even want to know why they was trapped up in there what they was up in there doing all she saw was matt seeing peter coming out that elevator him with his shirt off and her with her arm on him or whatever her hand on him nina was not with the shit she wouldn't even let maxie explain what happened nina was just like i got too much going on <laughs> so of course nina was meeting up with some jeweler or whatever she was meeting up with some jeweler to uh, get the necklace appraised to see like what kind of, you know, if there was a like if it was a half of a heart that was supposed to be on a whole heart. So he said, basically, yeah, it's, it's definitely a piece of an entire heart. Somebody must have cut it, broke it loose or whatever, cut half of it or whatever. So now she's just trying to figure out who got the other half. Of course, Valentine is being his usual dickhead self to Curtis, basically demanding answers about Nina's child. Curtis was like, chill the fuck out. I ain't got no answers for your ass yet. You need to calm the fuck down. Chill out. Go take a Prozac, a Xanax or whatever and go chill out. <laughs> like, I'm just interpreting what Curtis would want to say. Because um, Valentine is being all demanding and shit. I'm like, you do know that an investigation like this does take time. Like, chill out. Um... So basically, Nina walks in on the tail end of their conversation wanting to know, you know, because she basically didn't even care at that point. She was like, Valentine don't do nothing but keep secrets. So she don't even care because she thinks somebody was um, stalking her or whatever. But apparently the guy who was watching her with the suit is a guy Valentine hired because 
Cassandra, of course, is on the loose, so he just wanted a guard to protect um, Nina. Nina was like, bitch, I don't need no fucking guard. If Cassandra come back to Port Charles, I'm beating that bitch ass on sight. If anybody need a bodyguard, it's that bitch because she run up on me one more time. She getting fucked up. <laughs> like, that's basically how Nina was. Nina was like, I ain't scared of that bitch. She was like, she come over here and try to run up on me again. I'm going to whoop her ass. Period. Remember, she done stabbed you. She done stabbed um, Cassandra already with that needle. I don't think Cassandra want, uh, round two. I don't think you want it. <laughs> you fucking with a heavyweight. You don't want round two. You don't got your ass stuck up last time and put in a coma now. You don't, you don't want to end up dead this time. I like Nina, though, because she ain't scared. Like, she like, I don't give a fuck about that bitch. <laughs> like, let her come to Port Charles and think she going to do something. Because Valentine was trying to get Nina to move back into Windermere until Cassandra was caught. Nina was like, I ain't doing that shit. Because she already know what Valentine trying to do. She already know he trying to use that to get back with her. And Nina ain't falling for it. I like how Nina holding her ground against Valentine. Because usually she'll probably be, you know, back with him by now. But she was like, nope, I ain't falling for it. I'm single. It's a new me. It's a new day. I'm chilling. I don't want you. We're getting a divorce. That's pretty much how she is right now. She, There's no fucks given with her. I like it. Even though I have a feeling that they're going to get back together. <laughs> they will. Um, so anyway... Curtis got some information about the um the wire transfer for the money. So he found out that a woman did pay the broker and she's a single mother with a child that is around the same age as Nina's child would be now. So the question is, who the fuck is the mother? Something tell me it's Ava Jerome. Something tell me it's Ava. I have that feeling. Because they said a single mother. So some people kept thinking it was um, Nell. I don't think it's Nell because her father raised her. Frank Benson is the one who raised Nell. So Curtis said single mother. So that right there eliminates Nell. So it's either Francesca or it's Kiki. I don't think it's D.A. Dawson. I don't think it's her. I don't think it's D.A. Dawson because they said single mother. They said it was a single mother. Um, D.A. Dawson's mother wasn't single until D.A. Dawson was two years old. And if the body that's in, um, if the body that was in Charlie's pub, if the guy died in the 80s and that's her father, then that would mean that he died around 1983. So that would mean that she was around, she was born in the early 80s then. That would mean D.A. Dawson was born in the early 80s. So there's no way she could be Nina's daughter. I'm just putting the pieces together, trying to figure this shit out. Timelines and stuff. You know, you got to play, you know, detective and shit sometimes. You know, get these timelines together. But um, anyway, so now they try to figure that shit out. Um, Monica having a birthday party for Drew. You know, Drew, I understand he's not really in a party mood or whatever, but I do love the fact that he came to the party with a smile on his face, even though it was a fake smile. But, you know, he put it because he already knew about the party because he already seen the birthday cake the night before when he went down for a snack. So he already knew. Um, I will say this. It's lovely, as always, to see my boo, Leslie Charlson, Monica Quartermain. I fucking love her. Um, looking fine as wine as usual. Um, I understand where Kim is coming from with this whole thing. I just didn't like the way she came at Sam because I understand she's upset with Drew for telling Sam about Oscar's diagnosis, but you didn't have to come at Sam that way. Tell my oh Sam, it's none of your business. Sam was looking at her like, really? Like I'm sitting here offering you my help and anything that you or Oscar may need. And you sitting here being rude. Sam looked like she just wanted to slap shit out of her when she said that. Told me it's none of your business. Like Sam said, y'all basically family. And in a time like this, you need family. You know what I'm saying? But I do get what some people said in my comment section, though. That Kim was a single mother for a lot of years. You know what I'm saying? For 14, 15 years, she was a single mother. So she's used to doing everything on her own. So I cut her some slack with that. Because she's not used to having a family dynamic where she got friends and family that are there for her. In her time of need. She's used to being 
you know, superwoman, basically, when it comes to her son, like being everything for him, you know, because she was the only constant thing in his life. So she's used to doing everything by herself. I respect that. But it's like you don't have to be nasty and rude to people that's trying to help you. And she said they're telling um, Drew, oh, we need to talk about our communication because she don't want people to know. Oscar needs to know. I'm sorry, but he needs to know. It's like you keep hovering over him and stuff like that. But you don't want to tell him the truth because you think he can't handle it or you don't want him thinking about death. You know what I'm saying? I Let me tell you something. When I was a kid, I've had people die around me. Like I've had cousins die. Grandfather died. So, you know, I, I death just pops into your head sometimes. Even if you don't have a dire situation yourself physically, you don't have a choice but to think about death sometime. What kid wouldn't? And besides, he's older than I was when I thought about death, you know. I mean, shit, I was six, you know what I mean? And I thought about it. I had dreams about that shit, and it scared the shit out of me, and I was six. Even though I knew I wasn't dying no time soon, but, you know, when you go to funerals and people die, it's like you ain't got no choice but to think about death. But um, he needs to know, you know, because Monica was sitting there basically telling Oscar, like, for his birthday in a few months, we're going to have to throw a big party and stuff like that. And I'm like, he might not make it to his birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like, he needs to know this. It's serious. Like, he has a serious condition. He needs to know. It's not fair to keep quiet about it. Um. Then, you know, he basically was, like, trying to tell people to calm down because, you know, he got into a fight with Cameron or whatever, and they seen the bruises on his hand. Um, I agree with Drew. Like, Drew did not teach this boy how to fight. So that way he could just run around getting in the fights whenever somebody piss you off. I agree with Drew on that. He taught you how to fight to defend yourself against bullies and people that pick on you. You know, to defend yourself against that those kind of kids. You know what I'm saying? This episode was good, though. I enjoyed it. I think that's everything in this episode. Um, If I forgot something, just hit the comment section. But I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. For me, I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the fucking like button. 230 likes is the goal. Hit the button. And I will see you all Monday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. See you all Monday. Peace.